let's begin. Um, uh, first, uh, I don't see any members of the public, so I'm going to assume that there is no public comment. Uh, next up, uh, consent agenda, which would be the minutes from the previous meeting. Is anybody have any adjustments to those minutes that they'd like to talk about before we approve them? All right, so silence is consent in this case only. Um, so we are gonna approve the minutes from last meeting. You wanna give me visual thumbs up. So I feel like we've actually done so, awesome. Um, all right, next up, uh, committee membership updates. And I wanna say a warm welcome to Meg Vosian, who uh, you sh should be visible on your screen. Um, Meg expressed interest probably almost a month ago at this point, but because of the, the order of events and process, uh, the board appointed Meg to this committee last week. Um, I sent Meg a metric ton of things to read, and uh, I'm sure that she's read through every one of our minutes and all the other things. Um, welcome, Meg. We're very glad to have you. If you have any questions at any point this evening, feel free to raise a hand and we're happy to um, read you in a little bit further. Glad you're with us. Um, I think I already said, Joe cannot make it tonight, Rhett cannot make it, and Kale and Merrick are anticipating being a little bit late. Uh, next up, outreach efforts. How are these going? What support can we offer? Um, I'm just gonna read through the other two points, uh, reflections and learning from efforts to date and then report on the My Thought Exchange uh, work from Libby, uh, a report that I think Libby and Anna, or Anna pulled, pulled together. Um, and then we'll move as quickly as we can to, um, we'll move as quickly as we can to planning the next steps. Uh, I did do a little teeny bit of the updating of the calendar um, before this meeting started, but it may not be completely accurate. So we'll try to double check that. Uh, I especially want to get to tonight nailing down where we're going to be for the 25th and 26th. Um, I see Nancy Reed just joined. Um, Nancy, we blasted through public comment because there was nobody here, but if you have a comment and you want to address the group, uh, let me know. Thank you. Just listening. Okay, great. Thanks for joining us. Yep. Um, all right. So uh, membership updates we just did. Meg, Yes. Um, outreach efforts, how are these going? And so my head's a little bit spinning on this. Um, let me pause for a second on the, my thought exchange. Um, what, let's see. Yeah, my head is really spinning. Okay. So since the last meeting, for example. Sorry, I just um, wanted to put it in the chat so people had it while I was thinking oh. about it. Didn't mean to Brilliant. throw you off course there, Nathan. No, 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 no. You didn't at all. And uh, th thank you. That's good. So, um, except that now everybody's going to click on it and be reading and they're not listening to me. And it's, it's all about me, Libby. Um, so since our last meeting, Dottie, Rhett, and I met with students at RVS. And um, I think we met with four groups of students on an exercise that Dottie had designed. And I think that went pretty well. Uh, you know, sort of all things considered, given that some of those folks were kindergarten, first grade. And um, so that's encouraging. Beth, the principal there, and other staff, Tina Young, were super accommodating. And um, so if, uh, Dottie, when she comes back on screen, if she wants to reflect on that a little bit, I would love to hear her thoughts. We had, um, let's see, we were, I, I met with um, teachers at MSMS, did that happen? That happened before the last meeting. Okay. Um, I had a second meeting with teachers, the staff at MSMS this afternoon, and I can talk to that later if need be. Nick Connor was going to meet with Roxbury Village Schools teachers this afternoon, but we are really hurting for staff in the district right now, a lot of people out. And so Nick was subbing at the middle school and we have punted on, yes, thank you, Nick. Libby is clapping. Um, we've punted on the staff meeting with Roxbury Village School until a week from today. And I think Nick and I may team up and do that one together. Um, Seiji was at the farmer's market. Seiji, do you wanna talk about that? Um, yeah, it was much more successful in the winter market. Um, 
got a fair amount of feedback. Um, unfortunately, there wasn't really a, a common theme to the feedback. It was sort of all over the place, but it was good to engage with people and, and meet more people. Um, I think I, I told you last time I, I saw you, it's, it was much more difficult than I anticipated tabling. Um, people don't want to give you their time. <laughs> um, but it was, uh, it was good. And the, uh, the market attendants had a, a sticker board for people's ages. So you, when you walked in, you got a little round sticker and put it on your quadrant for your age. And that actually worked really well. So I think if we can identify a good single question to ask and have that format, I think it, it's good because people don't really have to give us too much time. It's, you know, put a sticker on the board and, and, and move on. Um, yeah, and I think maybe, I don't know, something that just to draw people there. Um, my face isn't enough. So, you know, something shiny or. You know, I had Beige, you did come get some swag. I, I did. You had it ready for you. I did got you? some swag. Yeah, Anna, Anna gave me the swag. You mean the keychains didn't draw people in? You know, maybe, maybe. Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> I own a brewery. We could work on that. Yeah, yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about that. <laughs> um, but we, this week, uh, I was next to the band. So that helped out with the, the traffic a lot. The, the week prior, I was kind of in a corner and no one really stopped by. Um, but yeah, being, being next to the band was, was key. Okay. So I, I, one of the things I'm appreciating about this and the, the work with Dottie at RVS and uh, Rhett and Caitlin and myself at the Race, Race Against Racism is we, we do have chance to refine this and sort of try some different strategies. So Seiji, I'm appreciating that feedback. And um, if you want collaboration on sort of the one question in the quadrant and, and, you know, letting people vote by sticker, I'm happy to collaborate with you on that or hear your, you know, hear your ideas and then help make that happen. All right. Sounds good. Uh, Tina, I see your hand. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to know, Seiji, uh, could you pick one thing you got out of the time you've been there that you think is significant or not for that matter? I would say the one piece, my, my main takeaway has been when you talk to people about school, it's hard to, or it, it really, it becomes personal instantly. So everybody's feedback is, is very, very unique and it's, it's, it's about them, which, you know, that's what I'm asking them, but it's so, I've, I've found it hard in my time so far on the board to get a common piece of feedback. Um, I mean, you know, COVID's a struggle. That's one common thing. But otherwise, the, the needs are very different, very specific to the people's backgrounds, to their children's abilities, to, you know, their, their goals and everything. So it's, it's really wide ranging. Um, so unfortunately, that's the, the, the feedback is that it's been kind of scattered. Not surprised. Thank you. Yep. Seiji, when people are sharing those things, is there a, do you, are you able to ask a follow-up question or, you know, sort of lead towards something that's that would be concrete to us you know or ask them you know given your experience what would what do you wish were different some you know something like that that would yeah i think i need to work on my my follow-ups to when i interact with people um because i don't really push for more details but i'll do that going forward okay um, yeah nothing too actionable but I, you know people some people would walk by and they they didn't have any feedback immediately so to ask them what they liked about their school if they're in a different district or something just trying to get some some con conversation going and get some information okay um i'm also happy to brainstorm swag even if it's you know something straightforward as lollipops or um one of the things that rhett and i talked about but i, I think you and i talked about it also is you know we do have we have gift card. We have a budget for gift cards. Um, if they, as far as I'm concerned, if they fill out one of those, just one sheet, green cardstock, you know, answer that one question and hand it into you, they can fill out a pink, a pink slip that would allow me to send them a gift card. Um, okay. You know, maybe we just need a poster that says gift cards. Yeah, yeah that would be enough. <laughs> that would get them over there. A penny, penny for your thoughts. Um, Okay, so 
you know, I think that this is, so for one thing, gift cards were imagined, I imagined gift cards as an enticement for people to fill out the survey. We've got a ton of people who filled out the survey who are sort of, as we've described, within a demographic that's not a surprise. And so I think that it's time to, you know, up our game and be a little bit more aggressive and um, maybe at the farmer's market, if I'm there, you know, we can just get out into the crowd and, and say, hey, would you fill this out? If you come back to that table with this filled out, we can give you a, a gift card or something like that. And I can I can buy a bunch of gift cards so that they're just, it's instant gratification. Um, okay. Uh, what else did we have? We had, um, Susie, I don't know if you've done, made more progress at the elementary school or not. Not really. Okay. <laughs> um, then, I don't know if you've gotten, you know, people responding to the, when you were there in person or when you talked to the staff meeting. Um, but I haven't, I haven't heard anything else. Okay. I think that did create a bump in the survey response. Uh, and then the two, the two public gatherings that we have nailed down as of now are the 12th and 17th at the UES playground from 6 to 7.30. And so I'm hoping that those are easy and accessible. Um, but we'll, we'll circle, circle back to that. Um, let's see, Mel Hauser and I, oh, go ahead, Susie. Oh, no, you're not, not talking to me. <laughs> Sorry, three kids just came home and I'm trying to direct traffic. <laughs> That's fine. Let, let them know that I want some popcorn too. Um, uh, Mel and I had a, a good brainstorming planning conversation for how to work with or try to connect with students who are on 504 plans or IEPs. Uh, we have reached out to professionals in the district who are in that area and Bill Dice got back to us this morning indicating that, uh, that he sees our idea as a viable way forward. So I think Mel and I will follow up on that. Um, Dottie, I did not get a chance to dig into your email this morning, but it uh, looks like Dottie uh, has some ideas for refining the exercise that she designed. And I have a list of teachers' names from Linda Beaupre at UES. So Dottie, you and I, and anyone else who's interested can start to schedule some UES student sessions. I'm excited about that. Uh, Mel, go ahead. I saw your hand. I'm just curious um, because we we could get maybe we can get feedback from this committee because what we had talked about for the sessions with um, with kids who have IEPs and 504s it would be similar to kids who do not have 504s and IEPs, which is that um, we were talking about how would parents. Um, like like choose what format for kids to to participate in. So what we were proposing was to via the special education staff sending out correspondence to families to be able to pick whether they're going to do something in person, virtual, whether the parent wants to be part of it or not. Um, is that like I I, I just I, I wonder for the parents on this committee like is that a you think that would work like if you got a letter about this would this so, letter say to me there are these times i could go somewhere to talk about this or um i'm not sure what the letter is saying you're asking the letter doesn't exist yet, but the, I get the letter I know, to say that here are the dates. If they're like, uh, there, there will be by the time the letter goes out, there will be dates with times, you know, and 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 you pick, you pick whether you're giving permission for this and whether you, you know, which which date you want and whether you want to be there for it or not. You mean permission to talk to the kids, Mel? Is that what you mean? Sorry, I missed that part. Um, what's different, so so what, what Nathan brought up that was different, um, perhaps different for um, kids on 504s and IEPs is like p without getting permission ahead of time, families may understandably flip their lids if 
they're getting pulled out from services or pulled out from something that's not a service. Like it, 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 the timing ends up being something that, that, that the school may hear about. And so proactively collaborating with families to see what's going to make sense. So like if they don't want their child, even for like 30 minutes, going to go have a conversation and missing something, then perhaps they would choose an after school thing instead. But we can, but, uh, but, but I think that it sounds like we maybe need to get more feedback, um, including from you about, about what that should look like. Yeah, I'm just worried about PERPA violations. I mean, we have, we have- I'm worried that- I, Go ahead, Tina. Uh, well, I'm worried that if I have a child that's special ed, I'm wondering why you're just asking them. Why is that special ed child not part of a community of a group of kids that are also not special ed? That's, I'm not sure what Libby thinks about that. We have, tar I mean, we have targeted, which is like an awful word, but I don't know. Ident just Ident identified intentionally, people. Intentionally grouped um, uh, letters to go home to groups of people, with special ed being one identifying factor, um, BIPOC being another, to invite or to encourage um, responses. And uh, we haven't been very successful from that. We find that the most success happens when it's a friend reaching out to talk to people, not when it's even a case manager, I don't think would qualify as a, as a friend. I don't, I don't think you'd get the traction on that. Um, I think any, if we were to go down that route, it would have to come from the district because of FERPA. Um, we don't we don't want to break any FERPA violations, so um, that that gets tricky with a with a community group. Am I making sense, Mel? Absolutely. So it sounds like we should have an, ha, have have more conversation about what are the different options for this identified group to to be reached and. Where is this allowed to take place? And from whom does the invitation come? And all of those logistics to make sure that we're FERPA compliant and that we're giving people freedom and choice. And just to, to clarify the genesis of that process that Mel and I were going through was, um, you know, I think, I think Mel's point, which I still agree with is it may be it may be more difficult for students in 504s or IEPs to engage with our process. So let's make a special effort. I pointed out that, you know, the, the time sort of in classroom, that, that in classroom experience and that in classroom learning is pretty precious. And that sort of anytime folks are pulled out of class, that's sort of high stakes. And so we were trying to navigate our way through this, and I'm, uh, so I'm glad to hear more feedback. Um, Libby, maybe Mel and I should follow up with you after this meeting. Does that sound okay? Um, and I think that Tina, your question, you know, we we are our approach sort of to the general population is to try to find teachers who are willing to meet with us with their classes uh, and give some class time to just the whole group. Um, and obviously that's not a that's not a FERPA issue and we're not going to be identifying kids on our results. Uh, all right, so I should say, it seems to me that that's not a FERPA issue. Uh, I will confess that I don't know the ins and outs of that completely. Go Mel. Um, a few months ago, maybe, maybe even a long time ago, I think, um, I ended up connecting with Ryan Herity, the former UES principal, is now superintendent in Lamoille. And he had done some community, like some student focus groups when he first became superintendent. And I was very curious about that when I learned about it. And I asked him, like, what would you learn? Like, like what was a successful forum? And he said that like the critical variable was that the group needs to have been a group that was a group already. So like the idea of doing a focus group of a class is way better than a random group because you really, and we talked about this last meeting, like safety 
is a prerequisite. Regulation is a prerequisite for engagement. And so I don't know. I think that it's not necessarily like, you know, we want to have these big community opportunities, but that's not safe for all brains. And so I think that if we want to double down and like focus on outreach to individual classes, I think to Tina's point, that might really be much more, I don't know, like a really good use of our time. So that that is that has already happened at Roxbury and it's going to happen at UES and it's going to, I got a bunch of names of uh, a bunch of teachers volunteered for that today at MSMS. So I think that's on track. Um, let's table the rest of this, Mel, and you, you, and, you and I can follow up with Libby. Is that okay, Libby? Okay. Um, other outreach, let's see. So I think that, that, that I think that's sort of where we're at uh, in terms of active things that have happened since last time. The, the, the cards I described, I don't have an example with me, but when Rhett and Caitlin and I were reflecting a little bit after the Race Against Racism and thinking about Seiji at Farmer's Market, um, I came up with, I designed a, an eight and a half by 11, one page, just you know, single question. It had a drawing of a thought bubble, bubble and then um, the other, the second, the bottom half of it had some simple demographics that matched the demographics from the My Thought Exchange. The idea being, if we're only going to get a little bit of somebody's attention in a little bit of time, just ask one question. And I, I did that for four different questions. Uh, you know, a vision one, a values one, thrive, and uh, I can't remember the fourth one. But so that if you're sagey at the farmers market, uh, you can sort of. Um, curate which ones you're handing out or, or ask people to respond. Um, so we haven't, it sounds like we haven't really tested that yet. So let's, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I want to jump, unless there are other questions, I want to uh, go to Libby's presentation about the My Thought Exchange. Um, Libby, do you, do you want me to hand you the reins so you can screen share? Yeah, I want to do that. Let me see what I need to do that. Well, share options. Okay. I think I can do it. Hmm. Yep. I, I just changed changed it to all participants, so go for it. Okay. Oops, hold on. Uh, hold on, let me just get my Usually I'm the one in control, Nathan, you're <laughs> messing me up here. I can also right. share my share my screen and just advance when you want me to advance. I got it, I think. New computer too. Okay. Um, so I apologize that this didn't get, and now that I'm sharing, oops, stop. Now that I'm sharing, I can't see you all. So just interrupt me. Um, I apologize, this didn't get out earlier to the group. The thought exchange ended uh, today and we had to wait until the whole thing was ended before we could create anything. And so I can pull up thought exchange here so you can see all the, all the fun things we can do. Um, my assistant, Anna, went through this with me today and we created this um, relatively quick slideshow so you can see what happened. So here's what, here's what our question was. What are the most impactful things our schools can do to prepare the students for the future? Um, you can see the breakdown of the participation, which pretty much matches the survey that went out. Um, mostly female, mostly highly educated, um, mostly Montpelier. So you can, you can see all the demographics that answered this survey. And Nathan asked if this was a, how was this response in comparison to other community? thought exchanges that we did and it, it's pretty, it matches the participation and other thought exchanges that we've done. Um, so let's get to the good stuff. Uh, you can do all kinds of fun things with thought exchange. So here are the big words that popped up from all of the, the answers. Um, here are the themes. So Anna and I went through, you can, thought exchange does it two different ways. You can compute, they, they like do an AI theme which don't really match what people say and then or you can go in and make your own themes. So these themes are ones that Anna and I created today as we are going through all of the thoughts. Um, 
that came up. Uh, other is just a bucket. There's only two or three thoughts in there. Um, it's just a bucket that they did, those thoughts didn't fit into anything else. Like there was no other group that it matched to. So you can see the top themes um, by total thought. Social emotional learning came out on top, and we can talk about that more of what that means in a second. Critical thinking was by far the next uh, biggest thought. Kind of basic life skills was a catch-all phrase for reading kind of that college and career readiness. We probably could have said that and said that instead of basic life skills, but it's basically the basic skills of reading, writing, be ready for adulthood, that kind of thing. Uh, advanced coursework were people who really wanted their children pushed or accelerated. Um, there were some staffing concerns around either teacher effectiveness or paying teachers were the two big, big parts of that. Accountability, and when it says accountability, it's not, um, it's talking specifically about discipline and behavior of kids, holding kids accountable for their behavior. Uh, there was some themes around hands-on learning, global citizenship, STEAM, um, which is STEM with some arts thrown into it. So it's science, technology, education, arts, mathematic, uh, mathematics. The other piece, a little bit of a creativity. There were some people who talked about nutrition and then there are a few people who talked about climate. Um, these are just some of the cool ways how you can look at it this way. So this is the uh, tile view of all of those themes. You can. So it's basically the bar graph put into more of a tile format so you can see how big certain themes came out. Um, here's the star score. So when people went in to uh, indicate which they agreed with most, that was given a star and critical thinking and global citizenship had the top two slots for star score. So they were, they were the ones that, that spoke to people most, those two themes. These heat maps are pretty cool. Um, when we were talking about, um, I think we were talking about last week, how you can disaggregate the data. You can disaggregate the data with these heat maps in pretty much any way. So in this way, it was through the town of residence from the survey respondents. So you can see in Montpelier, if you were from Montpelier, um, you answered in critical thinking and accountability and behaviors advanced coursework, global citizenship, the ones that are really dark blue, that's what really spoke to the citizens of Montpelier or the residents of Montpelier. In Roxbury, similarly, you can see what came through with the dark blue marks um, there. And then the other are people who uh, had access to the survey but may not live in Montpelier or Roxbury. Um, so I'm not exactly positive who that might be, but my assumption would be that their grandparents or their um, just citizens of uh, community members who are people who just care about our education system. Here's another heat map in response to um, I am a, so I'm a student, I'm a caregiver of a Montpelier Roxbury student, I'm a Mar Montpelier Roxbury faculty member, and you can see how they ranked according to theme as well. Um, again, the darker blue are the ones that popped for those people. So for instance, if I look at global citizenship, that really popped for Montpelier faculty members or staff and caregivers of Montpelier Roxbury students. Um, so that's just a way to read these heat maps and another way that you can uh, disaggregate the data that we got from this thought exchange. And I can, I can go into thought exchange if you wanna see others there. And then just some top five highest rated thoughts for, um, this is just overall the top five higher, highest rated thoughts on the entire exchange, not by theme, um, but just by thought. And, and everybody in the community can actually see, see these thoughts. They're, they're live and you can see it, but we'll put this, web, we'll put this presentation up as well because it puts it into some nice buckets. So the top thoughts by uh, critical thinking, this is what people said. Just a second there. The top thoughts that people said for global citizenship. Uh, for accountability on children's behavior. The other thing to keep in mind is that a thought can be attributed to two separate themes. So you may see thoughts in two different themes. 
um, in terms Maybe. of advanced coursework. Yep. Can you back up one? Yeah, sure. The uh, the accountability one. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we. I'm not sure if we have the tools yet to sort of pull that apart. But it's. I'm struck by, you know, one of these says, uh, teach tolerance and respect, hold kids accountable for their actions, um, and then another one says consequences and accountability, and you know some of those bend towards sort of a. Uh, I what I'm going to simplify is like law and order, like indicating that somebody feel feels like there's not enough rule um adherence to the rules and then others yeah. are maybe you know it's it's about tolerance and it's about healing and it's about, so i'd be very interested to, if you have any thoughts on that or uh, that might be something we can dig into a little bit at the community gatherings to hear people go into that yeah i think that's what you just find right so they're all around the same theme but they're coming at it from very different avenues <laughs> Um, some more from an appreciative inquiry avenue and then others for, from more of a um, top-down kind of discipline and rules avenue. So that's what's interesting about any kind of feedback from community, right? You get, you get the differences. And we could do a differences analysis through this thought exchange. Um, and Anna and I looked, in, looked at that and we didn't find it productive for this particular exchange because there weren't enough opposing views there are just a few that pop like the ones that you noticed there Nathan yeah okay um advanced coursework those are the top thoughts by advanced coursework um creativity getting into some of the the lesser here's what people said about staffing can you back up one once again yeah <laughs> So I just want to call out the at the top one here under creativity says elementary equals play based middle equals project based high school equals interest based. Um, and I, this is the kind of comment that I find fascinating and a little bit challenging in this process because um, it, to me it's sort of halfway between vision and sort of educational program design or something like that. Um, yeah. So the you know as just a, a, shout, a, a heads up to the committee, as we get into June and we start sort of trying to make meaning out of all this information we've got, we're going to be wrestling with uh, what do comments like this mean and how do we how do we distill them into a vision and then how do we take what's not vision and put it into a parking lot that's still information the district should have but isn't directly relevant to this process. Mm -hmm. Thanks, yeah, it's a good, it's a good point, Nathan. Um, staffing. You know, this is another one that shows differences in thoughts. You you get anywhere from um, increased teacher pay to raise the standards of teachers because they're not they're not some aren't doing those things effectively right now. It's a, it's the same piece of dichotomy that you were talking about earlier. Uh, social emotional learning. Here's our top thoughts. Uh, basic life skills. This was kind of tricky to nail down, but I think basic life skills is the best way to put it. Uh, Hands-on learning. And then STEAM. And that's pretty much the slideshow. I'm happy to go if anybody wants to see some other things that um, the differences or um, some other heat maps, because we could see I am a Montpelier Roxbury faculty, we could go into that much more deeply if we wanted to. Um, but there's there's lots of other ways you could disaggregate this data. Thank Any so thoughts people that. have on that? Fun stuff when you start disaggregating it. I can walk out on it for a while. So I just want to say out loud, uh, when Libby and I composed this question, we we tried really hard to make this question a, a new question that wasn't being asked in the survey. So we so even if we people responded to this, we were not getting 
uh, double counting more or less. And uh, so just grateful to Libby for that time and that thinking. Um, we go to the top, well, actually I can go to the top slide, never mind, hold on a second. This had, uh, come on. Uh, 138 participants, 69 thoughts, and 1,964 ratings. Is that right? Okay. So just, you know, in raw numbers, our, our big survey is up to 258 respondents. This was 138 participants. We've got some students. We've got some teachers. We're about to get community members. Um, so, you know, one of the things we're going to be thinking about as a group is now we're going to be getting into the in-person meetings and feedback that's not easily sorted because it's not in a survey and it's not in a thought exchange. And so we're going to be, we're going to have this pretty big amount of quantitative data. And then we're going to have an also big amount of messier stuff where we have to make some interpretation about, okay, what is this, what is this comment speaking to? So what I, oh, go ahead, Mel. Do we have any um, like a baseline demographic data for the district so that we can compare percentages of what we get to like what we should expect? Just to see that like this, so I might look at this demographic and say, well, there's not a lot of this population, but I would want that to match like the makeup of the district. At least. Right. Libby, if you have this off the top Hold on, of Mel, I'm pulling it up. Yeah, I'm <laughs> pulling it up right now. I'll link it in the chat. Hold on. Yeah, thank you for that. So we Susie, had to, we had to, I'm sorry, we had to pull that information for, um, for uh, our passer. And it's on our website. I'm putting it in the chat right now so you can get it easily. You can just go down a little bit on this document. It's all there, Mel. Sorry. Thank you for that. This is just a nitpicky thing, but um, Libby was categorizing the things from the thought exchange, and one of the ones was basic life skills. But to me, basic life skills are different than reading and writing and arithmetic. I think that those are basic academic skills. So just if we're gonna be kind of trying to like, you know, group all the information in an organized way, maybe we can just add like academics to that subtitle so that um, that's what that's about. I just think of basic life skills as different things than that. I would push back in that, yes, there are much, there are many more broader things that could go into basic life skills and reading and basic reading, writing and math would be part of those as well. I think it's a larger bucket, but that's what people responded with speaking to the reading, writing, math, because we're talking about schooling. So it makes sense, but I'd push back that that's, that's part of that bucket. Um, I think it's part of not the whole maybe, bucket. Maybe if we could just add like academics in like parentheses or something, I don't know. I just think that um, that way, like people, know, we're all talking about the same thing. Oops, to me, that seems like a different thing. So I just want to, if we're like quantifying people's ideas um, that way, it's, we're recording it the right way. Um, Mel, I see your hand. Um, just a clarifying question about this. So, so it might be helpful um, to because because I, I I agree with both of you, um, so it's there if if people only talked about reading math like basic those kinds of basic academic skills and they they weren't talking about things like you know um, like the like taking care of yourself type basic skills like self care type basic skills if they weren't saying that. I guess what I'm kind of hearing is like maybe it's concerning to like represent that the community said that when they really only meant math and reading. I don't I don't know, but I think that's kind of how I see both of those viewpoints balancing. Yeah, or the other way around too. If people are saying like you know self regulation, self care, and they're not talking about math, so yeah, either way. 
Um, can I ask you a question, Libby, because I haven't done the deep dive that you and Anna did. Are there, is it possible that this could be split into basic, you know, sort of basic academics and then, I guess, my no, my question is, what other things were people mentioning that weren't math and reading and stuff like that that are still in this bucket? It's probably put into social emotional learning if we're talking about uh, empathizing, perspective taking, you know, all of those things were, were put more into social emotional learning than basic life skills. Ah, uh, interesting. Okay. So I, I I'll confess this is, I'm going to date myself, right? When, but again, when you, you can put things in two buckets, right. right? So it may have shown just the way the slides were showing, right? So those were the top themes, but those could have also been in somebody else's bucket. Does that make sense? Yep. Well, and I, I caught myself when you said basic life skills, um, you know, Back in the day when I was in high school, we had home economics, and some of that was how to cook an egg, and some of that was how to uh, how to That's sew. That's what I was thinking. Balance your right. checkbook, like <laughs> you know, things like that. That's what I feel like basic life skills are too. So maybe I'm old school too, Nathan. Well, so I just wonder. I mean, this is to Libby. You know, are, would you feel okay shifting that title to something that is that does point more towards? Um, I don't know if it's just based, basically. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't particularly care. I can, I can absolutely do that. I'm not tied to it that strongly. Okay. Um, there was, I do remember one thought that was, that was basically like uh, teach kids how to be an adult or the skills that they need to be an adult, which would be much broader, right. than um, yeah. reading, writing, math. So I'd have to look at that one. And okay. Um, thank you very much for that. Uh, are you, we okay to trust Libby to look at that one more time and then we can keep moving? I trust Libby to look at that one more time. <laughs> okay, so next up for me is looking ahead and planning ahead. And I'm, I'm going to pause for just a second because Carmen is on, uh, Elliot is on, um, and I and Meg, I just do you have any thoughts or reflections I know we're going to talk about some tabling at the high school and things like that, but I just want to hear from students for a minute. Um, I haven't uh, had any thoughts that haven't been repeated by someone else tonight. Um, so I think I'm okay for now. But I don't know if you get away with a thumb there, Meg. Um, I agree with what Carmen said. Um, I have been having a very hard time hearing. Everything's been going in and out. So I've caught like maybe a third of what's been said. Meg, do you have anything to add? Um, Emery is just tuning back in. Elliot, if you can hear me, um, I wonder if for the next meeting, we you can come be at the high school either in the library, sort of not too near me or something like that in a way that's you've got good service because I, if you're only hearing a third of this, I'm concerned, you know, I want you to have uh, more complete access than that. Um, Emery, I was just, I just sort of hit pause on all the adults talking and I was asking for any reflections you all have as students. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, Emory, do you have something? Sorry, I'm trying to read your face. No. Okay. Um, all right. So looking ahead, the uh, the twelfth and the seventeenth. So the twelfth is this Thursday. We're holding a community gathering at the UES playground. I think the weather is going to be gorgeous, if not hot. Um, we will have snacks and refreshments. I have made posters that I'm putting up around town, which are maybe backwards in your um view um 
also put it up on Facebook on the Friends of Montpelier group, but uh, want to make sure that we get this out through multiple networks. I haven't done it on give it uh, put it out on Front Porch Forum. Um, Subi, Susie, do you want to continue to be a an avenue to Front Porch Forum? Sure, I will. Okay. Um, this first what one is a little. What time are these, Nathan? What uh, time? Six, six to seven thirty. Thank you. Both on the twelfth and the seventeenth. And then the uh, the the poster, the link on Front Porch on Facebook, and we can do this on Front Porch Farm also has an opportunity for folks to let us know if they need childcare and to let us know if they need interpreters. Um, I'm aware that that for the 12th, if people need interpreters, for example, we're, that's pushing it in terms of having enough notice. Um, childcare, I think we can probably muster, but uh, Libby, that was something that Libby and I talked about before we had a committee uh, as possibly coming from the school and, and um, you know, generating high school students. Libby, is that, do you think that's still viable and should I go through you or should I try to gin up my own version? Child care for, for Thursday? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if we have enough time now for yeah. child care for Thursday. I'm sorry, I wasn't, that wasn't on my to-do list, I'm sorry. Uh, you're, I'm sorry, because it wasn't on your to-do list and that's <laughs> not on you. Um, okay, so I'll see what I can do as far as that goes. I think we can probably manage to pull that together. Geez, if only somebody had two amazing kids who uh, would be great childcare providers. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hit up your lovely children. <laughs> um, so then the uh, what I would love is if some of you want to join us for the 12th and the 17th, partly to just participate, but also partly to see how a community gathering like this can go that we are that we've got some facilitation design around and that um you know because it's pretty those conversations are pretty exciting it's not a ton of time but i think it's about what we can expect to get in terms of people's attention on a weeknight and then as has happened with every other piece of this there will there's always refinement there are always things we can do better or things that we learn and then we've got two more coming up on the 25th and 26th of May. Um, and, you know, I think those will probably be better, partly because they will have more notice ahead of time and because we will refine our process. One of those I would like to hold in Roxbury. And it's out from talking with folks in the Roxbury community, there's not a strong preference for the 25th or 26th down there. I would really like it if some of our committee, especially Montpelier folks, come join us in Roxbury because I think that um, it is important to show up for that community if we're not from there uh, and to listen. So tonight I wanna to nail down which of those nights we do in Roxbury and which we do in Montpelier. Again, that's the 25th and 26th and in any, any minute now I can tell you what days of the week those are. Wednesday and Thursday. Thank you, Tina. Um, so do you folks have any strong thoughts about Roxbury or Montpelier for either one of those dates? How about this? Is there a better date where more of us could make it down to Roxbury? I can help drive if you're a student. What time is the event? Uh, shooting for six to 7.30 for these weeknight events. I could be there for either day. Okay. Yeah, um, how far away is Roxbury? I mean, I can also just look this up, but it's far, right? Uh, it's not that far, 20, no. 20, 30 minutes, depending on traffic. An hour. Okay. Uh, yeah, either day works for me then. Uh, which days are they tentatively scheduled for so far? So in Montpelier, the 12th and 17th uh, at U Union Elementary School Playground, and then the 25th and 26th, 
one date at Roxbury Village School and one date probably again at UES unless we choose to have a different venue up here. Emery, do you want to join us for one of those? Definitely be available the 25th and possibly the 27th. I don't so know if I can get it or ride. Uh, I heard you say you're available the 25th and maybe the 26th. Uh, I'm uh, seeing Blake. Yeah, definitely the 25th, probably the 27th. Okay. So let's, um, and, and Meg is saying either day works. Um, so Mel is saying could go to UES on Wednesday. Um, but Mel, you have a five-year-old, but there will be childcare and it'll be fun because if there's a- I don't have the kind of five-year-old who oh. will um, find that accessible. Fair enough. Okay. Um, so I, what I'm shooting, what I'm hearing is let's go down to Roxbury on Wednesday, the 25th, and then stay up in Montpelier on the 26th um, because I think it'd be, it'll be fun to have um, Meg, Emery, and Carmen, and Nick down in Roxbury on the 25th, okay? Um, Mel, if you feel like Thursday frees up and you can come to UES or, uh, you know, it'd be great to have you there. Um, okay, so, and then I'm gonna try to get a couple more dates in, you know, I'm, I'm just, keenly aware that we are approaching the end of May. It's effectively summer, it's the end of school. So we're gonna lose people's attention, but I'm, I'm feeling like we haven't quite cracked the, cracked the code on especially getting to some of our marginalized groups. Um, I am doing outreach with uh, the folks in the schools who work with English language learners, either to attract you know, folks who are English, uh, for whom English is not a first language to one of these events or to create a different event uh, that is specifically designed and accommodating around that population, because I think that's pretty important. Tina, I see your hand, go ahead. Um, I'm, since you're talking about timetables, I'm a little curious. The last time we talked, you said you were giving a presentation to the board on the second board meeting in June, which is the 15th. And um, for us to, have these groups talk about a vision and values. And as I see it, we have a meeting on June 6th, but that's the only meeting uh, before the 15th. So how are you pulling that off, Nathan? So I think this falls into the category of the expanded timeline for this process. And credit to Tina for asking this question via email ahead of time, to which I said, I'm really focused on the public engagement uh, I don't have an answer about June. Um, so I think, Tina, that the our two meetings of this committee in June need to be where we try to, so I want us to prepare, I want me and some of us to prepare a bunch of the information we've gathered ahead of the June 6th meeting, get it to the group so that we can address a few core questions at that meeting and at the following meeting. And so that between those two meetings, we generate a draft, uh, the best conclusions we can from what we've got to that point. I Which? don't know, so I don't, I don't expect this community to stay engaged past June, uh, at least not in a sort of, you know, by bi monthly or bi-weekly meeting. Um, it may be that the, we come back to the board with something that's further refined in late August but I don't, have a, I don't have a firm plan on that yet. I, I think it's too bad, Nathan, as you know, that the board doesn't have it ahead of time to think about it so that when you come back in August, they're ready to talk about it. Well, I'm not saying the board won't have it. I'm saying, as you're saying, it's tight. Okay. Yeah. So let's, let's pause and talk about that a little bit further. The, you know, we just had looking at the my thought exchange and we called out a couple of different 
statements that were challenging uh, in terms of where they would fit in and how we would interpret that that feedback. As a committee, you know, if, we, if especially if we have full attendance, 17, 18 people, that's that's a lot of discussion and a lot of work. Uh, our meetings have been 90 minutes each, which is not a ton of time to sink our teeth into those questions and then achieve some resolution. So question to the committee, are you up for some longer meetings in June that allow us to sort of work through this, possibly even in person, which might be an easier way to do that than virtually where we can sort of break into groups, we can write things down, we can draft some things. Uh, I'd love to get to that point. Um, hopefully this current COVID wave will be passed or maybe we can meet outdoors. Um, I'm game for longer meetings. I do think it's going to be complicated work, but it's also exciting work. How about this? If you're up for meetings that are longer than 90 minutes, give me one thumb up. It's kind of not fair, is it? Um, I'm, I'm up for that also. If you're up for meeting in person in June, even if it's outside to try to be safe, give me another thumb up. Okay, uh, Libby, you fine with that prior to June 17th. Libby, are you out after that? Yes, I'm taking a well-deserved vacation once school is out. <laughs> okay, great. So it's possible then that we may also try to cram, nope, we try to reschedule creatively so that we can accommodate the most people on this committee to be participating in this process. Maybe we could meet two Mondays in a row in June instead of every other. Yep. I think that makes sense because Libby's voice is pretty valuable and she really didn't have anything planned for the uh, 13th anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> laying around eating bonbons. <laughs> um, okay, so what, what else do we have? So other things that are on our docket, uh, Nick is still here. So Nick and I are going to try to do some neighborhood outreach. And that was something that other folks had expressed interest in. Nick and I haven't nailed down days for that to happen yet. We have talked about some of our methodology. I do have that list of folks who indicated interest in that. So once we have that together, we will reach out and sort of open that door. Um, Sagey, it sounds like you might have some company at Farmer's Market. Uh, anybody interested specifically in committing to coming to join me on the 12th or 17th for the community gatherings? Susie, I'm any pretty date? Sure, yeah, I'm pretty sure that I could probably do both. I have to look at my actual paper calendar in the kitchen and see about stuff, but I okay. want to do both and I think I can probably do both. Okay, I'd be thrilled to have you. Anyone else want to join me for one of those? Carmen? Um, sorry, my mic was on. I can do I can do the 17th. I can't do the 12th, though. Excellent. Okay. Dottie? Um, I am not able to. Um, I'm on too many committees at this point. Um, uh, and we're just getting our park construction going on and I just don't have any time that I'm not involved at the end of the day on those days. I'm, I'm just glad you're able to do the in-school work with kids so I'm grateful for that. Thank oh you. I love doing that that was fun and I would be happy to do it for um, Montpelier School too. Okay um, I want to circle back to something in the chat Mel you said, I think if I drop, if I send you a poster, you'd post it in the office. Did you say that? Okay. Um, I printed some out at Capital Copy. I could drop one by, or I could just have them print a couple more and you could pick one up. Would that work? Okay. Um, I'll do that tonight and they'll, they'll have it ready by 8.30 tomorrow morning. So I need time tomorrow. Okay. Um, 
so I'm just conscious that a lot of the outreach is sort of, you know, either through the schools, uh, you know, Libby and Mel and I are going to talk about 504 IEP folks. Um, Nick and I are working on sort of neighborhood outreach. Um, I am, I'm in conversation with Amanda Garces, who's a board member and who has been leading some, a number of affinity groups, especially around the ESSER funding. And she, um, her interest in she, what she thinks is the interest of some of those affinity groups is that they not sort of repeat sort of similar stories or experiences that they've had once again, but that if we organize conversations with them or either one big conversation or several smaller ones that uh, I do the work or we do the work to sort of take the um, comments that they've already added to about experience in schools and in the district and we start the conversation from there and move forward, which I think is great. Uh, and I'm waiting to hear back from Amanda about sort of dates and times that might work for those groups. Uh, if we pull that together, or is anyone interested in riding along in that conversation, on that conversation? Mel, go ahead. Um, yeah, I, 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 if you can keep me in the loop with that, I, I, I think that's probably something that I can help with. Okay. Anyone else? Nathan, I'm happy to join you whenever. I'm a little con I'm a little worried about my positional power, and I don't want to stifle any voices with my positional power. So just let me know when you need me somewhere, and and I'll see if I can do it. But uh, but yeah. I, I'd love for other people to join it prior to me, if you, you know what I mean. Yeah, I do. I've thought about that also, and and I think that I'm really torn between the value of you being able to sort of hear directly versus whatever, you know, if if your presence has a distorting effect. And I, you know, let's let's talk about it on a sort of case by case basis. And I appreciate that you're conscious of that. Okay. Uh, I'm just looking at the agenda. We're remarkably cruising through this. Uh, housekeeping items. Uh, I still, I haven't gotten stipend checks out for April. So I'll do that in the next couple of days. Um, the, if folks are not part of that yet, if you haven't filled out a W-9 uh, to receive stipends for committee participation that's for members of the community who are not staff or board members. Um, contact me if you want me to resend that stuff. Um, let's see. And then I, th I just want to circle back to something that Mel said earlier in the meeting, which I thought was really useful about her conversation with Ryan Harity back in the day, or maybe a more recent conversation about his listening sessions from back in the day, which was um, and something Libby said also, which is that generating turnout or generating participation in some of these uh, conversations is most effective when it's within groups that already exist. And so that's my, my ask to you all as we look for these community gatherings to be you know, populated and we're, you know, have a good turnout, please promote them to people you're connected to, a personal ask the sort of social capital of, hey, you know, it'd be, I think it'd be really great to have your voice here, or I think you're a really valuable perspective. Whatever script you want to use, uh, leveraging social capital is a really important way to create turnout and participation in these things. So please do that for the community gatherings or any of the other opportunities. All of these community gatherings are going to be in person. So people, if they're worried about COVID, cannot be on Zoom. Is that correct? As designed right now, that's part of why we're trying to hold them outdoors. Um, however, I, you know, we can organize at least one, if not more than one, that's virtual. And I think that's a good point. What do you, Tina, let's... Let's drill down on that for a minute. Do you think a similar time frame, six to seven thirty on a weeknight, would work for a virtual version? I would think so. I was trying to decide if it's possible to do both at once. I guess maybe not. I think it's really hard. Um, yeah. It's it's you know with a group like this where we've got some established relationships, I I could pull it off. I think with some integrity, I think. Um, 
with members of the public and I don't know who's going to show up and it's that's very difficult. Yeah, agreed. Um, that said, I think your point is a good point, especially given <laughs> I'm astonished by how many people seem to have COVID right now. Um, so Tina, you had given me a couple dates. Uh, hold on. Tina's dates, the 18th, 19th, and the 25th, right? Do you want to try to, uh, let me look at my calendar. You want to try to create one of those for the 18th or the, or the 19th? I'm not sure I can do those anymore, Nathan. Um, but I missed, I missed my window. Um, and the 25th is your Roxbury meeting, right? That's, yep, that's correct. Hmm. Let me think about that one. Okay. Um, I'm going to circle back with you in the next two days because, you know, I want to be able to promote these and get the word out. Um, Tina, uh, you know, through the senior center, for example, if I send you either just uh, basic information about these gatherings or a graphic, is that something that could get into a newsletter? Um, the la the newsletter just went out, Nathan, but if you give me a poster, I could put it up at the senior center. Okay. I may just do that myself tomorrow because I've got a stack of them and I've, you know. Put it in the glass, in the glass in enclosure in the side on the way into the building where the poems are, put it there. That's, yep. people come and go there. Okay, good. Um, just to speak on that, I, I want to get down to once now that we've got the 25th and 26th, I'll remake the poster with those dates on it, get down to Roxbury and put some up there. Uh, you know, Metamart, Shaw's, Co op, all the schools, uh, other sites for sort of in person posters aside from Charlie O's. Any ideas? Thanks, Susie. That was for you. All right, I'll come up with my own postering locations. Um, so this will be on, it's on the Friends of Mount Paleo Schools. Uh, Susie and I will collaborate on getting it on Front Porch Forum. Um, this is another example where if I, I'm gonna send out some sort of easy link to all of you via email and ask that you circulate it to either select group or a bigger group. Um, Again, the social, social networks are one of the most effective ways to get people to turn out for these things. Any other thoughts or topics to cover? Go, Mel. Is it possible to make like um, a comprehensive list of all the dates and times and locations all in one place, like a little table and have it go out through the MRPS emails? I have found that when things are only advertised on social media electronically, I mean, like I understand that they're being advertised all over the place in posters, but when you live in a COVID bubble, um, you don't see those places necessarily. So you rely on your electronic correspondence, but there's a lot of people who like don't check social media, but they do check the emails that are, you know, that will be very carefully uh, crafts and and gets to the people so like that might be another place to send and like not a whole bunch of emails but like one email yeah so i think the way i would i'll do that which is on my list anyway is to use the um you know the gator news from katie beret at the middle school um the communication from the elementary school that goes to that cohort and then the salon salute solon salutes from the high school um each of those, I think, you know, I don't, I don't know what the readership is, but that seems to be pretty good. And we got, uh, I think that the twelfth and seventeenth should have been in each one of those for this week because I know that um, I think Renee, yeah, Renee at the high school put it in the salon, salon, salon salutes on Friday, uh, so that went out already, and then I did not check the other two pieces but I assume that would have gone out today from middle school and elementary school for the 12th and 17th. 
Yeah. So again, I haven't checked. Are you on? You're on the UES one, Mel. It was on Katie's. It was on Katie's from MSMS. I didn't. I admit to not looking at RBSs or UESs. Okay. Mel, will you check? And you might be looking now. Okay. <laughs> I'll wait. Um, Carmen, uh, Emery, Elliot, Meg, where are you all on this? Oh, so sounds as though high school students will be tabling at MHS this Friday is what I'm hearing from Joe who couldn't make the meeting. Emery's nodding, Carmen nodding. What time and can I join you? Uh, we're trying to coordinate to have tabling in the cafeteria during all three lunch blocks, which is from 11 to p.m. till 1 p.m. And then also during Solon block, probably in the library, which is from 105 until 140. But um, I think so far only um, Mr. Carroll, um, myself, and Eli are like confirmed for for tabling. So, I for me, you cut out on the lunchtime blocks. For can you tell me the lunchtime blocks again? Uh, sure. Sorry. Um, the lunchtime times or the um, lunchtime the, blocks. The times, yeah. Uh, so lunch is typically from 11.15 until 1 p.m. Okay, so and then, I, go ahead. Uh, just Solon Block is from uh, 105 until 140. So. Okay, is it, uh, is it okay if I come and join you for those and then I can be the, uh, I don't know if it's necessary to have an adult in the room, but I can be the adult in the room? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. And we'll coordinate uh, about materials and such. Okay, that's awesome. Um, okay. Uh, Mel reports in the text, in the chat rather, that it was not in today's swoop scoop. Uh, so I will turn, I'll, I'll come back to Linda Beaupre, um, especially now that we've got two other dates not locked down. Okay. Thank you all for coming this evening. Any final thoughts? Okay, good to see you all. Thanks for committing to a little extra time in June. See you then, or see you next meeting. <laughs>